Hello, everybody. This is the second lesson for practical Qigong. Today we are talking about the diamond. And I welcome again Ashida Kim, uh, which will explain to us in uh, detail uh, uh, how to use the diamond and what it is good for. Uh, probably the best uh, question to start with, Ashida, uh, where do we use uh, the diamond or in which situation would you use it? Uh, well, the diamond technique would be one that uh, uh, is the opposite of the fireball technique. In the fireball technique, you create an energy pocket between your hands and then you press that into the area that you want to warm up or, or correct imbalance in. In the diamond technique, you make a pattern like this and you draw the energy out, okay? Because you have to bear in mind in, in Chinese medicine, uh, everything is based on yin and yang, okay? Yang is the fireball between your hands because it's a fire element for one thing and because it's, it's, a, it's a positive energy that you're going to project into something or going to project to do something with. In the diamond technique, you're talking about yin energy, which is emptiness, which is what is represented by the, by the yin element. And so the emptiness, is used to draw things out. And there's two, basically two diamond positions. One is with your hands up this way and your, and your fingers, your thumbs uh, basically uh, horizontal. The other is with your thumbs extended. It makes more of a diamond shape this way. The difference is used for different areas of the body. If you're doing a large area, you basically use a large diamond. If you use a small area, you're doing a small diamond. Okay. Either way, you don't wanna be looking through the diamond when you do this. You want to have your head away from it, especially if you're leaning over somebody when you're doing this, this type of therapy on them, because what you're doing is you're drawing the energy out of an area that is congested. You don't want to be standing over it and have that energy hit you in the face because then you'll absorb it. You and, and it's not, wouldn't be healthy for you that way. So essentially the diamond technique is the, is the opposite of the fireball technique we started with last time. And the fireball technique, as you remember, started off by having the half lotus palms, which basically meant the middle two fingers are touching together. And then you put them about eight or 10 inches apart. Then you lower your center, stand in the horse stance, as we showed on page four or page seven, and you circulate your hands until you feel the energy between them. Now, once you get there, then what you do is you close your fingers up, you tuck your thumbs in. Right. And you're looking for a little point on the web of your hand right here. It's called large intestine four. And large intestine four is right in this, in this web area uh, between your index finger and your thumb. Now, the easiest way to find this, because it's an acupuncture point, is to take your thumb and put your index finger underneath your hand and feel around with your thumb until you feel what seems like a little gummy bear under the skin. And that's where the large intestine four is located. And so, on, so it's, of course, the point is accessed in acupuncture on, on the skin by barely penetrating. But to press on the point by using acupressure, that's the, that's the area that you find right there. When you feel that little gummy bear under your skin, then that's the large intestine form. And the reason this is important, and this is actually gets into a, a more advanced lesson, but the reason this is important is because it deals with acupuncture meridians. The large intestine meridian runs from the outside corner of the index fingernail, up the arm, okay, up the side of the neck, it crosses across the, in, in your face and ops, it ends on the opposite nostril, on the outside corner of the opposite nostril. So the large intestine meridian actually crosses directly under your, your nose on the philtrum, that little space under your nose. The large intestine meridian, of course, controls the large intestine, the colon. So this is important in treating disease because if or imbalances of energy, because if you if you have constipation, then the energy in that meridian is not flowing fast enough. Now, since the meridian flows this way, if you want to put your thumb on that point and massage it in a counterclockwise method or counterclockwise direction, you'll stimulate the flow of energy in that direction, and it helps to relieve the constipation. If you have, on the other hand, diarrhea, then the the energy is flowing too fast in that meridian. So you put your thumb in the same place, but you massage clockwise. And by doing that, you slow down the energy in that meridian, and it helps to relieve the diarrhea. And the same principle applies to almost everything else that we're going to do in the Qigong therapy techniques. You can 
inhale, you can you can dispel the congestion by making the energy flow more smoothly through the meridians. And we'll get into talking about how the meridians work in a future lesson. The main thing about these first two techniques, the fireball and the diamond, are that you can do these techniques without understanding how they work, simply by feeling the energy on your hands. So to charge up the diamond so that you can actually draw congestion out, uh, for instance, if you have uh, uh, a sinus congestion, you'd use a small diamond for the face area. If you have congestion in the lungs, you could use a larger diamond to help draw that congestion out or relieve the pressure, the energetic pressure, so that, that congestion can dispel. So if you're doing this, you put your fingers together like this, make a large diamond. And you start down at your lower tan tian, okay, which is two inches below your navel. Ashida you Kim, have... let me bring up uh, the PDF uh, for to help people out. There Hold on, go. I'm sharing my screen. Okay. And I bring up the PDF. And uh, here. That's the grounding one, okay. So. Do I move uh, to the next page? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so just as a reminder, remember the stance right. from the fireball, right. and uh, uh, here is the explanation about uh, for. yes, and how to put your hands together right. and how you operate them. Right. Now, when you're doing this, you put your hands together. Like I said, when you start to do this diamond technique, you bring your fingers together after you've made the fireball. You tuck your thumbs in. Right. Then you find this point, large intestine four, that's indicated there, and you rub these points together. Okay. Do it both ways. You do this for a couple of minutes until they start to feel warm. Okay. You don't interlock your fingers like this, where you put your, your thumb inside. Okay. Because that presses on the point in a different manner. You want to press on it mostly by just flat surface, side to side. You do this until your fingers get warmed up, and now you're ready to make the diamond shape by extending your index finger and your thumb producing the diamond shape. Okay, now your hands are charged up. You should feel the energy on your hands when you're doing the fireball technique. And then you should concentrate it between your hands when you're making the diamond technique. So that's to, to carry on to where we're going next. So. All right. And uh, uh, what I found out using the diamond, uh, when you draw out energy out of a uh, part of the body, you actually feel later on a cold wind going through your diamond shape. And that indicates that you are really pulling something out. Right, right. This is one of the one of the keys to using this technique. And when the first time you feel it, it'll be kind of unusual because you'll you'll think to yourself, I can't believe this is actually happening, but you'll feel the energy coming out between your hands. The part of the trick to doing this is after uh, which I'll, I'll mention uh, how, how to charge your hands up in a minute. Part of the technique of doing this is to extend your little finger on your right hand when you're doing this. This is a grounding sort of an antenna sort of a technique it helps to keep the energy from blowing back on you and causing you any, any harm. Okay, So that's a little side part or a little final part of the technique when you're using it for a therapy. Okay, So the next thing you do is to charge your, your diamond up. Okay. By doing this, you have your diamond shape. You start with your lower tan tin. Okay? You breathe in and you bring the large diamond up. Okay? And then you breathe out, and you push the small diamond down. So you start going upwards with the large diamond as large indicated diamond. on the center uh, uh, picture and right. then going down, you use right. the small diamond. Small diamond, and this helps to concentrate the energy in your lower tan tin, where it's going to uh, charge your hands up and make your hands you know, uh, magnetically, electromagnetically charged. So this will operate the way you want it to. Now you do this three times, okay? <clears throat> and then after the third time, your diamond is charged up. Now you can basically use it as a therapy. He like said for this diamond technique is used primarily uh, for uh, uh, problems that involve dryness and heat because it's a way of dispelling the dryness and the heat. Bearing in mind that the main pathogens in Chinese medicine are cold, wind, damp, fire, or heat and dryness. 
Okay. So those are the five pathogens, but there are many degrees of those pathogens. And that's one of the things to get into in this second lesson of this 12 part series that uh, Grandmaster Harris and I developed. And the second lesson, the first part of this particular course is a list of the more elaborate uh, pathogens so the more variations that the pathogens can combine into like summer heat. Summer heat is different from dry heat. So in order to help you identify these different conditions and different imbalances that can develop, the, each one of these pathogens has a little paragraph about it that, ex, that, ex, that explains some of the uh, uh, characteristics to make it possible for you to identify these imbalances and therefore know how to treat them. So uh, these this technique with the diamond technique here uh, is very good also for pain if you have a problem with pain. Um, the, uh, the trick is now once you've got your diamond charged up, you do not place it on the, the person that you're doing the therapy with. And of course, you have to get their permission just as before to, to perform these techniques on them. You put the diamond over the area that you want to provide the therapy for, and you extend your little finger out to the side. And you're about an inch and a half away from the person that you're working with. And you hold this position, just breathing slowly and deeply until you begin to feel this wind between your hands. Sometimes you'll feel your hands will tingle at first, just like you do with the fireball. Other times you'll just feel the wind itself. But once again, don't look into the triangle that the wind go past you or make sure that you're letting the wind go into an area that it's not going to collect and create any more problems for anything else. Because all of these things are energetic and this energy uh, will linger and, and, it will, and it can contaminate other things. Now, when you're doing the fireball just to develop it and just to practice it for yourself, after you've done the third repetition of the breathing exercise and you have your diamond developed out to your, to your solar plexus level, just in order to dissipate this diamond energy, you open your hands up and let your fingers separate. And that dispels the diamond energy so that it no longer is drawing the, from the area that you're that you're uh, indicating that, that you want to have decongested or dispel the energy of. Part of this too is like with the uh, with the fireball. Once you get done, you have to shake this excess energy off of your fingers so that you don't have any uh, tingling later on, or uh, uh, you don't have your hands charged up so that you uh, uh, lose sensation or lose. Uh, your feet, well, not your finger, you don't lose your tactile strength or your tactile abilities, but your hands are more sensitive if you leave the energy on them. And so when you pick up a glass, it might not feel like a glass at first until you kind of bring your, bring your hands back down to a normal level of energy. This also applies when you're doing therapy. Once you've done the technique and you've dispelled the energy, okay, then you have to drag the energy off so that it, it, is, it is carried away from the patient that you're working on, from the person that you're dealing with. So this helps them to uh, dispel that energy and relieve that congestion. So this is the yang part of the, or the yin part of the two first two techniques. The yang part is the fireball. So once again, the third technique that we're gonna deal with is called Nei Gong Wa Jing, which is, is emotional healing. And it, is, it also has a, a tactile component to it. And after that, we're going to get into um, the more uh, personal aspects of balancing your own energy, like the five elements and the 12 meridians and this sort of thing. And these are all things that you need to understand before you can do the advanced techniques, like the fire bowl that you, where you keep your hands together, basically, uh, as you're, and you really concentrate the fire energy or the uh, dragon claw or scorpion claw, where you can bend or uh, meld bones back together. And so these are things that you have to understand before you can do that level of technique. These first three techniques are very basic, very simple, and we want to share them with everybody for as free as we can, because we want to let people help each other. When you, you see somebody in pain, it's, it's, people have a natural human tendency to want to help. I'll give you an example on the large intestine four techniques that I was talking about. When I was in South Africa, uh, some years ago, uh, we were eating at a restaurant and one of the ladies that was having dinner with us was complaining that she had irritable bowel syndrome and had a lot of difficulty with that. 
And I asked her, have you ever heard of large intestine four? And she said, no. And I explained it to her just as I have here. And three days later, she came over to the place where I was staying and was uh, talking to the people that were hosting me there. And she told them that she had not had a bit of trouble since she started using that point because it had relaxed her colon, essentially, and enabled her to, to have much better digestion and therefore be much healthier. Bearing in mind, like we said before with the tan 10, the lower tan 10 is below your belt buckle. If this area is warm, then you tend to have good digestion. And good digestion is very important in ancient Chinese medicine because if your digestion was good, then you were generally healthy. And that's why they were very important uh, to understand about vitamins and minerals and things like this and, and make sure that you had the right diet in addition to, because back in those days, there weren't antibiotics. They had to have things, techniques like this to help people get better when they had some imbalance that was caused, especially by uh, eating uh, something that was uh, uh, not full of antibiotics like we have nowadays. So I'll give you a good example of that too. When I was overseas one time, uh, uh, our host uh, was fond of, of having uh, fried egg sandwiches every afternoon for lunch. And so I ate about three or four of these sandwiches, but because they were not eggs that were full of antibiotics like in America, I began to develop a digestive problem because there was bacteria in the eggs from the farm that I was, my system was not accustomed to. And so I had to do some of these techniques to, to balance that back out. So these are things that you can do that, can, that you can help yourself with and that you can also help others with. And it's because it's like I said, it's a natural human tendency to want to help each other when you're, when you're having trouble. Just a quick summary on the course here. He said, this is the second part of a 12 part series. And we developed this uh, in, in order to uh, allow people to uh, learn more about Chinese medicine and to help themselves and others with um, energetic therapeutic techniques. And uh, we hope that everybody enjoys the show and everybody enjoys the, the, the techniques that we're learning here. And these, each one of these levels offers a certification and there's a certification if you finish the entire course. It's just a matter. And some people like to use these techniques, yoga people and things like that. Sometimes we're Reiki people sometimes use these type of techniques. And it's nice for them to have a certificate that, that says that they are, have taken this course, especially if they also they have the book that says, here's what I learned, and you can check it out, see if I'm doing it right. Yes, so. and, and I uh, again want to point out uh, that uh, it's on dojopress.com, and uh, please go there, and it's under 21st Century Qigong. Uh, I want to put, put something out, uh, and uh, what I'm pointing out here is within the picture, you can see that Grandmaster Kim has the diamond uh, set in a way that whatever comes out of it, it won't hit his body. So he is moving out of the position so that he is pointing it uh, over his shoulder, whatever comes through the diamond. Uh, this is a, a point I just wanted to do, put in uh, as an addition. And uh, you see there's a, a little more explanation in here as well, but uh, it's best explained in uh, the second book where it really tells you all about uh, how to use the uh, Qigong technique, uh, this type of technique. So uh, let me see if I can get the view back to normal. And because uh, uh, I'm missing a button here on my screen, uh, I don't know what happened with the menu. Uh, it was a pleasure again uh, to be together with you, Grandmaster Kim. I thank, thank you for uh, uh, you, uh, your time. And I know that everyone uh, uh, enjoyed already the first lesson. And uh, I know that everybody will enjoy the second lesson as well. So thank you very much. And we will try in two weeks to do the next lesson. And what is the next lesson about?
Uh, the next one is the Nagong watching, which is the uh, emotional clearing techniques. Okay, then yeah. we see you then, and uh, thank you. Thank and you I so much. Enjoyed it. All right. Bye bye.